known for lush green ferns and old growth trees. But walking through this part, it's obvious something is changing. Now reduced to these wilted brown uh, former sword ferns. And of course, there are a few live sword ferns still in there, but what we've been seeing is this area is progressively becoming more and more dead, especially in the last year or so. Tim Billow teaches environmental science at the University of Washington. He's been monitoring a massive die off of sword ferns that started here in 2013. In fact, the problem is getting worse, and in fact, there is no regeneration happening. And the problem seems to be spreading throughout the park, and that to me is alarming. Take a look at this picture from 2011. It's bright green. Now look at the same view from 2017. It's almost entirely brown. The sort of the subjective immediate response is, this is not right. This is just deeply not right. Paul Shannon is the park's forest steward. He says the problem is spreading. The areas of dead ferns doubled from 2015 to 2016. But really the concern came from seeing this um, spectacular dead zone getting larger. Shannon says at this rate, all the ferns here will die in 10 years. Certainly important for holding the soil in place. And we wonder now that this lush fern understory is gone, what is going to hold the soil in place here? Sword ferns are also important habitat for wildlife and nothing else seems to be sick. So no one's sure exactly what's wrong with the ferns. All of the leaves are just dropping off of the fronds. Ferns can live more than 500 years and are tough to kill. A mystery that's taking away history with no clear way to stop it. In Seattle, I'm Allison Morrow, King 5 News. Now, the team working on Seward Park's fern die-off is hoping to get funding to do better.